Good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening, everybody. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes, give some people some time to maneuver and get on here. Good evening, good evening, Sister Williams. Good evening, good evening. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, sister. Thanks. <clears throat> Give it just a couple more minutes. Uh, it's been a minute. Make sure we give those people time to maneuver back to us. <laughs> We didn't have a good little break, so. Hope y'all day has been going well and blessed. Y'all been staying cool, most importantly. One more minute, one more minute, and we're going to get started with our Bible study, our Wise Up Wednesday, get a little more wisdom in this Word of God that we call the Bible, and so we can take some stuff and apply it to our living. So one more minute, and we'll get, uh, we'll get started, a few more seconds. Good to see all y'all on here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with tonight for our Bible study. We are first, as always, let's pray, and then we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this, another day, oh God, that you've blessed us, how you watched over us all week long thus far. God, how you uh, just made a way for us, oh God, how you kept us. Uh, through danger seen and unseen. God, thank you for bringing us to this point in time, oh God, that we get to come together and log in and view and learn more about your word. Father, I pray that you would open every heart, every mind, forgive us for all our unforgiven sins, consecrate us, oh God, that we can be receptive to your word on tonight. Father, give us something that we can take it, that we can embed within our hearts, not just so that we can keep it for ourselves, but God, that we can share it and, get, and let your word go out into this dying world. Now, Father, I pray that you use me as you see fit. Bless everyone that's watching and their homes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, uh, tonight we are picking, actually picking back up uh, from where we left off uh, in our series, our, our Wednesday night series of promises we can count on. Promises we can count on. Let me give you a quick recap of the first three sessions because we're on session four tonight, but the first three, uh, just kind of the topics of them. The first one was God promised uh, a fruitfulness. 
He wants us to have the things uh, that uh, and be blessed, more than blessed, abundantly blessed. So he promised us fruitfulness and then he promised us preservation, preservation, that he's going to keep us. He's going to hold us in the power of his might. He's going to make sure we are taken care of because we are his own. He loves us so much so that he wants to preserve us. He wants us to uh, 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 live a life that he would have us to live. And then uh, the last one we did just before we went on this break was God's promise of blessings. God's promise of blessings. We already we, we ain't even really got to say nothing about that. We understand that God definitely promised us blessings, but not only does he promise us blessings, we understand that he keeps his word. All of us have blessings that we can look back and tell God thank you for. All of us have experienced a blessing or two uh, here and there, and, and we understand what it means to be blessed by God. So last one we did was God's promise of blessing, but tonight... Tonight, we are moving a little bit further into it, and this one we're talking about, it's right there in the chat also. God's promise to make a holy nation. God's promise to make a holy nation. It's in uh, Exodus, we're in 19th chapter of Exodus tonight, verses 1 through 8. I have pinned it there. I hope that you already have gotten your Bible or, or your app, and you're looking and you're following along. You're not just going to take my word for it. But that's what we're talking about tonight. God's promise uh, to make a holy nation. Um, we set apart. We are his children. We are believers of God. We are set apart. And God promises to set us apart because we are his people. However, his promise to set us apart is conditioned. It is conditioned on obedience. It's conditioned on obedience. He'll set us apart, but we have to understand we have to be obedient unto his word. Let's make it make sense. Uh, Exodus 19 verses 1 through 8. That's going to be our, uh, our premises for tonight and kind of help us bring that thought process on home so we can have a clear understanding uh, of what it is. Uh, imagine this before. Before we get to the scripture, imagine this. Imagine uh, no matter how old you are, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you got going on, do you not understand? Do you not realize, or maybe you realize, I hope you realize, that rules, rules are just a part of life. Doesn't matter how, all throughout your life, rules are a part of life. Most of us as children growing up, uh, you probably had to hold your, your, your parents' hand when you walked across the street. It, it, you, or walking through a parking lot. We still hold dicks in hand walking through the parking lot because it's, it's, it's safety for us because we want to make sure that he's not going to get hit. He's not going to run off into the parking lot. So we hold his hand. It's kind of a rule, right? Now, granted, he loved to walk by himself and take off running and, and, and just be on his own. But sometimes the things that we do as parents are things that are to protect him. Uh, growing up, we all had rules our parents made in the house, right? We they had rules in the house that would keep us safe. Curfews. If you had a curfew, it wasn't because they were trying to stop you from having fun. It was because parents understood, and even now, that after a certain hour, things go haywire. Things are not right. People that's out there probably ain't up to no good. So they was it was a rule of protection to keep us safe at the time. Probably thought, oh, they limited my freedom. They don't want me to go out and have fun. They don't want me to do this, that, and the other. And we do it to our own kids. They don't want us out doing it. It's not limiting your freedom. It is because of the wisdom that the parents may have to say, no, I'm going to set boundaries to protect you basically from yourself and from others. Uh, but being the rebellious people that we are, <laughs> uh, oftentimes those rules ended up being broken. Oftentimes when your parent told you to do something, you ended up 
breaking the rules some shape, form, or fashion because you was just being rebellious because you didn't like the rules. Uh, some of us didn't break rules. Some people said, nah, I was a good kid. I didn't break no rules. But as soon as you got of age, as soon as you was no longer in your parents' house, as soon as you got to a point to where those rules did not apply, you was out of there. No, you everything that you wanted to do that they stopped you from doing, you made sure you did that and some. Let's 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 just be honest. You 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 did all of those things. But even though you're grown, even though now you're out, guess what? We still have rules to follow. You got rules at your workplace. We got traffic law rules. We got criminal rules. We got uh you 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 have to make sure uh even in sports. They got rules. You can't do certain things. Basketball, football, all of these things in our lives, we still, even though you're grown, you still have rules. People sometimes even question, why, why, is, this, why is this even a rule? Why is this even relevant? Why is this something we, 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 we have to have? You may not understand it, but because you don't want to get in trouble with the law or anybody else, you still obey it. Why? Because it's something that we must do. And honestly, if we'll be honest with ourselves, we, 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 we start to think that some things in life are just restrictive. They just keep us down. That, that, that rule don't even make sense. But similarly, when you think about your relationship with God, when you think about, uh, his commandments, when you think about uh, the rules that God has laid out for us. We don't like all the Ten Commandments. We don't like all the rules. They're confining. Some of them we feel like they're too old and obsolete. Uh, or some, as like a whole lot of other rules, you think, oh, it's just a suggestion. No, God intends for his commands, his commands to be obeyed. He intends for this to happen. If we obey his uh, commands, then we'll be blessed. His, 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 his commandments and his commands are not to hinder us, are not to hold us back. They are actually there so that we can be blessed. When we obey him, we experience a life even the more to its fullest because now we understand, hey, I'm doing what God would have me to do. And if I do what God would have me to do, he's going to bless me. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, Exodus 19. We're going to break it down. I'm going to read verses 1 through... I need some glasses. 1 through 4. Uh, first, I'm going to read that first and then we'll, 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 we'll break it down. Uh, it says, In the third month from the very day the Israelites left the land of Egypt. Read it from the Amplified Version. Uh, they came to the Sinai Wilderness. They traveled from uh, Rephidim, came to Sinai Wilderness, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up the mountain to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob and to explain and explain to the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself brought you to myself. Do you realize that even right now today God carries us on eagle's wings? We 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 are we are blessed and highly favored. We are honestly we could be in a lot worse worse shape had it not been for God, especially sending his son who died for us. But we are as Christians even though we have ups and downs, even though we're going through some things, we have to understand we still ride high because you are a child of God and he's carrying us on wings. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's an old song that says, count your blessings one by one. And if you can actually count your blessings one by one, because the list are, it ought to be way too long for you to even write down, you'll be surprised and be reminded of what God has actually done in your life. We can list all the good things, but honestly, we we everything that we list is still not the best thing that God has done for us. The best thing God has done for us is that he gave himself to us. 
That is the greatest blessing of all, that he gave himself to us and established a personal relationship between us and him through the faith in his son. That's how we got it. But here God, uh, God through Moses, at this point, God through Moses, he's challenging the Israelites to remember what he had done for you. And listen, y'all, 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 y'all have to understand, y'all wouldn't be where y'all are if I didn't part that water and allow y'all to walk through on dry land and then destroy that whole uh, army of Egyptians that was behind you. He says, listen, understand what where y'all are. Y'all been wondering and following me and being obedient, but guess what? You've never had, uh, you've never missed a meal. You've never went without. He said, I provided you with manna and everything else in the wilderness for them. He said, I gave you victory over the Amicalites. He said, listen, think about all the stuff that I have done for you. And we ought to be like that. Sometimes we get kind of caught up and too comfortable that we forget about the things that God has done for us. We forget about how he brought you through. And you think we start to think that we did it on our own when the fact of the matter is, if it had not been for God, we wouldn't be where we are right now. So he's saying, remember what I've done. Remember how I healed you. Remember how I blocked those enemies from coming to you. Remember the promotion I gave you on your job. Remember your child when they was needing some help and you was trying to figure out how they was going to make it through. But I stepped in right in the nick of time and paid that bill. He says, remember, that was me. I took care of that. He says, so don't get too comfortable and think that it's all you. But then if you're looking at this, uh, it, it's, it's, it's Moses is now at the mountain They're there. Everybody else is at the bottom. Moses, another encounter with God ascends, ascends to meet God at Mount Sinai. It, it's another encounter, kind of like the one with the burning bush he had, but this is another one. Uh, it's cause it's not the first time Remember burning bush. So he met, this is his second time meeting with him and he's speaking to him and he's saying, listen, this is a challenge that I want you to do. This is what I need you to go and tell the people. Remember what I did. Remember what you've seen. I've done to the Egyptians. He said, he's, he's expressing this to so much to the point. He wants it to embed in them to personally remember the things that they witnessed. Yeah. Remember the things that they witnessed. He says, all of these things, I want you, the plagues, all of the stuff that they could have uh, took place to them. No, the, I, I did all of that to keep them safe. So here's what God says. He says, I need you, Moses. I need you to go down there and affirm with the people. As just as I've carried you up here on eagle's wings. Uh, he says, listen, visualize us. Uh, where we are right now, visualize this. He says, go and let them know this is what I need. Don't forget what I've done. Don't forget the benefits that they've, they, they've had. Don't forget the blessings that, that I've been doing. He, he's driving this home over and over and over again just so they can have an understanding that the relationship that they have, that they're developing through God, that they're getting from God, is that he's trying. He's saying, listen, I got y'all. I don't want you to think it's anybody else. I don't want to think, I don't want you to think it's you, Moses. I don't want you to think it's your friends. He's saying, it's me. But this is what I need. I need for them to be obedient. I need for them to keep the commands that I am going to give. And if they keep these commands, if they keep these commands of what I need them to do, be more than blessed, abundantly blessed. He said, I'm not trying to be burdensome. I'm not trying to, to, to weigh you down. Have them to understand this is the act of love. I if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll do what I have. I'm not trying to be restrictive. I'm not trying to be a difficult God for you to follow. I'm just trying to set some ground rules and some order. Now, unbelievers, they suggest that, uh, again, 
If you if you if you're not a believer, you suggest these things just mess up. I, I'm trying to live my best life. I'm trying to live a life where I can be uh just just out there having a ball. But it sounds like the commandments and everything else that's happening is gonna hold me back. No. And honestly, the path that God wants us to walk on, it's it's not a shabby path at all. It's not a path that's trying to uh, that's going to beat us up. It's going to lead us to a whole lot of greater things that we can ever accomplish on our own. He wants us to follow his sure way. And as we live his sure way, we'll experience a life that is designed by God specifically for us. Designed by God ex ex explicitly for us. Uh, 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 then it goes, uh, verse 5, it says, Now, if you will carefully listen to me, now, if you will carefully listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my own possession out of all the peoples, although the whole earth is mine, and you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to say to the Israelites. That's what he was telling him. This is why I need you to go down and tell him, Moses. This is this this is the plan. This is what's gonna, gonna take place. He said, I'm trying to call y'all into my kingdom. I want y'all to be a part of me. Listen, y'all, y'all, y'all ever heard it, that that first word in that scripture, verse number five. The first word is now. And it's 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 a it's it's being used in a in a in, in one of those senses, right? Now listen, or now, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, it, it's, it's basically saying, now here's the bottom line. <laughs> this is what I need you to do. Go and tell these people if they listening and if they really are listening to you, he says, I want them to give careful consideration to my commands. Careful consideration. If they listening to you, if they following like they should, I want them to give careful consider like, consideration. And then the word keep, keep, it, it's a different sense. It's, it's being used in the sense of guarding, being used in the sense of watching. He says, I want you to keep, keep guard, keep watching, keep making sure that you are paying careful attention to this covenant that's being made, to the agreement that's being made. He's saying our obedience uh, 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 it, uh, of God is really is going to reflect the relationship. It's a reflection of our relationship that we have for him. And that is saying that we are his special possession. We special to him. You're special to him. You, you're not just some uh, fly-by-night person. You are his child. He loves you more than you can love yourself, but he wants your obedience. And your obedience reflects your relationship with him. And that's a special relationship. God told the Israelites, hey, listen, y'all special. Everybody else, they, they special too. But y'all especially special. And I am trying to make y'all a holy nation. Holy nation, right where they are. Uh, he called them priests. He said, I want y'all to be priests. Y'all know what priests are? Let, let me, priests, priests, priests. Uh, back then, Old Testament priests is, is kind of considered to be a mediator. It, it's it's a mediator. Uh, the priest's primary function was to mediate between God and his people. The priest would mediate between God and his people. The priest represented God to the people and guided them in understanding how to follow God. God's command, basically pastors. It's, 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 it's a, they're pouring into them. They're, they're, they're telling them, this is what I need you to do. That was priests. But they also represented on the flip side, they would go to God on behalf of the people. They would pray. They would do. So it, it, it kind of went to, that's why they're called a mediator in between from them to God, God to them. So the message ain't lost. That, that, and then and that's the Old Testament. That, that's how it was being described in the Old Testament. Uh, in the Old Testament, only male members of the tribe of Levi, that's who was able to function as priests. That, that's who was functioning. However, however, when you move a little further, uh, Peter, Peter 
told the audience. He said, believers. He said, everybody who's believing. He said, everybody. Everybody are all part of God's royal priesthood and his holy nation. That's over in 1 Peter. That, that's what he's telling us. We are witnesses. Can I get a witness? We are witnesses to what God wants us to do. We are to bring the message to a world that needs to hear it so that we can make sinners repent and turn towards God for salvation. That's where all, so we all preach now. He's called to them now uh, back in the Old Testament saying, listen, I need y'all to really go out and be obedient and really tell somebody about what I can do. And then on further down the line, it changes up. Once you accept him, all of us become royal priesthood. All of us have a job to do. We get word after word. We read our Bibles. God reveals stuff through us through so many avenues. And then we sit on it. No. God didn't intend for us to sit on it. He intended for us to learn from it, be obedient to it, but then go and tell somebody else just what has to be done. Uh, but then the last couple of verses, verse seven and eight says, after Moses came back, after he came back from the ascension, he summoned the elders of the people that sat before them all these words and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him. He told me, got them together, told them everything. Then all the people responded together. We will do all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses brought the people's word back to the Lord. After Moses went, talked to him and told him what thus says the Lord and what we should do. They told, we're going to do everything that the Lord said to do, God said to do. Moses went back up, told them just what they said. Now, Moses, Moses couldn't make this covenant by himself. He had to have the people with him. Because they had been following him. It, they, it, it was a group effort at this point. So Moses couldn't make this uh, covenant by himself. God's people would need to agree to it. And the elders' approval was an important first step. They approved. Hey, God, yeah, we're going to do what you say do. Terms of the people's was obedient. You had... They, you have to be obedient to the law of God. They gave it. They say, hey, Moses, he, he told what, what took place. It, just think about the Ten Commandments. All the Ten Commandments. That, that was their agreement. All the Ten Commandments. We know the Ten Commandments. We don't know the Ten Commandments. I challenge you to go to Exodus 21 through 17. Look them up. Read them for yourself. The first four commandments pertain to relationship with God. That's the first four. The last six pertain to relationship with one another. Between us, one another. And watch what the Israelites do. The Israelites, <laughs> they would, they, 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 they affirm, they said, Yes, yes, Lord. I'm gonna do all that God commands us to do. And when they say that, Moses goes back to the Lord and says, Lord, they said they're gonna do. What you said, do we all in agreement? Now we know the Bible even tells us <laughs> that they failed to do so. They failed to do so. The Bible tells us, New, New Testament supports it, that uh, even right now today, God's people cannot meet the demands of the law. Think about it. They said we'll do it, but they failed. New Testament, they said they'll do it, but they failed. 2024, we said we'll do it, and we failed. Because we are flesh. We are riches undone. We trying to, we, every day we trying to get better. We trying to do what God would have us to do every, each and every time you have an opportunity. Now, here's the difference. We will often fail God. 
We will fail him over and over again. But because God sent his son who died for us on Calvary, because God sent his son, God's son met the demand. Jesus met the demands of the law for us. He met that demand. He, again, Paul even talks about it. Christ, Christ in the end of law. He, he ended the law of righteousness for everybody who believes. That, that's the kicker. You have to be a believer who believes. Honestly, think about this. God's covenant that was made, the commandments that was made, all this stuff that was made. If you was obedient, your punishment was death. Punishment was death. That, that's what it was at during that time because God expects you to be obedient to him. When we disobey God's command, we were supposed to face a punishment. Uh, but in the midst of us, should when we should be facing the punishment, which is a true death and a true separation from God, now because Jesus Christ, who died for us, we may have to face some punishments, but we don't have to face the separation from God. That, that, oh, that ought to get you happy right there. Even though I messed up, I even know I fall short time and time again, even though I told God I wasn't going to do it and then turned around and still did it. It didn't separate me from the love of God. Now, I, I may have to face some punishment. I, my, my reward may not be as great as what it was, uh, so I may have to face something there, but I'm not separated from him. Well, what do you mean your, your reward won't be the same? What do you mean? All right, this and, and this, y'all, and I'm done. Uh, think about this. Parents, uh, grandparents, uh, uncles, whatever you may be, aunts, think about this. When your child messes up after you've said you was going to do something. Oftentimes, us as parents, we either not do it or whatever it was that you was going to do, you might not do as much. Right? It's, it's a cutback. You, Because you, why are we not trying to reward bad behavior? We're not trying to make them think it's okay to do wrong and you still get the things that you have or you want. There's going to be some type of punishment there. Same thing with us in our relationship with God. When we fall short of these commandments, when we, be, when we fall short of being obedient unto God, just like us as parents, we love our children, still love them, but they have to be punished. There's no separation there. We, 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 but... They have to face some type of consequence. We ain't no different. God is our father in heaven. When we mess up, there's a punishment that's going to have to take place. We don't know how much, how little, if at all. He's the one who, who sets that. He's, he, he, he is the father. But what does not happen is that we lose our relationship with God. That right there ought to make, listen. The fact that I know I'm going to mess up, the fact that I'm going to fall short, the fact that, uh, whew, and, and I'm going to ask God, Lord, forgive me. Help me not to do it again. And then you mess up and do it again. But yet your relationship, your salvation is still there and intact. That ought to make you just bubble over that you have a God that loves you that much that loves you that much ought to send you over edge. And when he does that, that's him saying, you special. You set apart. You are part of a holy nation. And since you are a part of a holy nation, I want you to live holy. I want you to do the things that I've asked you to do. Love thy neighbor. Care for one another. I want you to pray for your enemies. I want you to turn the other cheek. I want you 
It, it, there's a list that goes on that all of us, we cringe when we hear it. I want you to be patient. We, we cringe when we hear it because we want things to happen fast. We want things to happen the way we want. We want to do things the way we want to do. But he's not telling us this to hinder us. He's telling us this so that the path that he wants us on, we can't, we won't stray from it. He, he, he's literally being with his with his guidance, a lamp unto our feet, so that we may not stray from him. He promised to make us a holy nation. He promised to make us his children, a, a set apart, peculiar people. And because we are that, we've been preaching it all month long. We ought to accept that and take it and then go share it with somebody else. Tell somebody just how much God. Make a holy nation. We 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 have to go out and do what's necessary to bring people into into the realm of God, into the love of God, into the care of God. Are we going to mess up? Yeah, we're going to mess up. Are we going to fall short? Yes, we're going to fall short. But our relationship is built, grows, gets better between our obedience and the love that he has for you. So be obedient. Be holy. Be holy the best you can. <laughs> be holy. When you mess up, pray about it. Lord, give me more strength because I'm trying to be holy. I'm trying to be a part of your holy nation. I want somebody, when they see me, they see you. So, here it is. We received a promise to be set apart, to be a holy nation. And the only condition is we have to be obedient. I know. Nobody likes that word, but we have to give it to you. Have to give it to you. We have to be obedient. Listen, that's all I have for tonight. Uh, God promised to make a holy nation. His promise is to make a holy nation. The condition is all you have to do is be obedient. And we've been wrapped up in his love. Even though we mess up, we still wrapped up in his love that he has for us. He's a forgiver of sins. And he don't remember it. He cast it as far as from the east from the west. That's a blessing right there. Uh, that he don't hold grudges like some folk do. Amen. Uh, all right, listen, that's all I have for tonight. I hope you was blessed. I hope that you've been encouraged to understand that you are a part of a holy nation. And what he wants you to do is be obedient unto him and follow his way, his path, and the direction that he wants you to go in. And you'll be blessed. More than blessed, abundantly blessed. Amen. Listen, uh, before we go, before we hop off, let us be in prayer for the Hervey family. Uh, our very old sister, Dorothy Hervey, one of our ushers, her husband passed away on this past week. Uh, those uh, funeral arrangements, those memorial arrangements are just about set. I'll make sure we get the information out. Uh, regarding those arrangements, I've been in contact with the family, and uh, as soon as we have a hard, hard confirmation, uh, we will uh, get that information out. Uh, but we want to right now pray, uh, pray, pray of comfort for that family. And if there's anybody else, listen, we're praying for you just the same that God moves upon your heart, your mind, your family, your household. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, all you got to do is call on him and we are believing with you that God can answer your prayer. So we're praying for you and with you. Um, I don't think I have any other announcements. This Sunday is coming up. Listen, y'all be in the house. Uh, we are still on a good series. We're still 
uh, talking about can I get a witness. Uh, so y'all be in the house on this coming Sunday. Uh, look forward to seeing y'all. Uh, there's a lot of great things that's happened and a lot of great things that are taking place. We've been off a few weeks, but we've still been working. Myself, First Lady, praise the Lord, we've got the opportunity to visit uh a lot of 10th Street activities, so we got to see things going on in and around our church. So uh, uh, we're excited about that. Uh, just kind of recapping some of the last things that we was able to participate in Juneteenth, all of those 4th of July. I'm glad to see y'all made it through all of that safely. Uh, but I'm still praying for you for all the weeks to come. Uh, and I think feel like I'm missing something. Uh, uh, no, I ain't missing nothing, I don't think. No, that's it, that's it, no, that's it. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, the Stuff the Trunk event is on its way. It is coming, it is coming. Uh, so men, if you get with ministries, get ministry leaders, get with your ministry leaders. They have the information on what each ministry is to get together and bring. If you are not a part of the Brady L. Bethel Church and you want to uh, just participate with us on Stuff the Trunk, our Stuff the Trunk event is us helping uh, those high school graduates that are going on into uh, college years. We want to be a blessing to them through some essentials. That they need. So if you are not a part of Great Air Belt, the church, if you are not a part of a ministry, we pray that you get active if you are a member. But if you're not and you want to sow a seed, simply go to our website uh, and follow ways to give through Givelify and you can sow a seed and also be a blessing uh, through our Stuff the Trunk event. We want to bless our youth as they get ready to go off to school and let them know that they have a church that's praying for them, with them, and supporting them. Uh, our First Lady uh, partnered with our youth department and they do a great job with making sure, as well as Mission, they do a great job in making sure that uh, our youth are well taken care of. So we're looking forward to that event on uh, Sunday, July the 28th. So please plan accordingly. All right, uh, I think that's it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for what you've done for us on tonight. God, thank you for reminding us um, the requirements, oh God, that we be obedient unto you. Father, sometimes we can get lackadaisical, oh God, and we can think that we can just live any kind of way and do the things that we want to do. But God, thank you for the reminder tonight that, Father, that you've set out the ground plan. You, you've set out the ground rules, oh God. You've laid a path for us to follow. And if we follow your path, Father, we understand that we'll be more than blessed, abundantly blessed. Father, we realize that if we keep following you, we keep being obedient, we'll be a shining light to somebody else that they may come running saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Father, we want to be more like you. We want to be Christ-like. We want to obey you. We want to do those things that you would have us to do. For we understand that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart the things that you have in store for us. But in order to get that, Father, we want to be in your will. Now, Father, I pray for the Herbie family, oh God, that you move upon them. Father, let your hands of comfort, oh God, be with them. Let them know, Father, that you are forever standing by right now in their time of need. And if there's any others who stand in your need, Father, hear them where they are. Bless them where they are. Move right now. And then we'll be ever so careful to give your name the endless praise, saying, look what the Lord has done for us. Bless us, God, as we go into the rest of this week. Keep us day by day. Hold us in the power of your might. Let us feel your presence that our hearts can continue to burn within, knowing, God, that you are right by our side. Keep us as our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, thank you all so much for being on tonight. I hope that you was blessed. Uh, we back at it. Uh, see you all next week. And we're going to keep pushing. Uh, for those who uh, I forgot. Okay. See y'all Sunday. <laughs> See y'all Sunday. All right. Peace.